Hello there guys, RMP792 here. So, I haven't seen Discovery yet, sorry about that. Um, I think I've got two episodes now to uh, do, but uh, that will probably be tail end of this week when I actually see them and, and talk about them, so... Uh, today what I'm going to talk about is uh, the recent film Shazam, which I uh, went to see on Friday, and it's really good. I, I would strongly recommend this film. Um, as per usual, when I'm talking about a a new release film, I will start with general spoiler-free stuff, and then I'll give you a big flashing warning before you know, I actually talk about the spoilers. So, um, Shazam is basically about uh, a kid named Billy Batson, who has a conversation with a wizard, and as a result gains the ability to transform into a an adult superhero named Shazam whenever he calls out the word Shazam. Um, you know, giant ass lightning bolt comes down from the sky, and hey presto, he's now an adult. Um, though of course, still with you know, Billy Badson's mind and you know, sort of the mind of a kid driving this superpowered, you know, heroic body. Um, and Shazam is actually one of the oldest superheroes in comics. You know, he was created not long after Superman. Um, you know, way back in the forties by Fawcett Comics, and back then he was called Captain Marvel, but that's a tedious issue that we're not going to get into because it involves a whole bunch of lawyers and a whole bunch of really stupid moves by various people. So, you know, what can you do? Um, but yeah, as I said, this movie is really, really good. Um, I think it has a couple of tone problems. Um, you know, because for most of the film, it's very light and very fun and very comedic. Um, you know, I laughed a lot at this film. But there's a couple of, you know... Pfft, Sweet Jesus, what the hell was that? Moments that you know feel like they came out of a much darker movie, but I think one of the best descriptions I've seen of that is it feels a lot like some of those '80s movies where you know it's oh this is a child-friendly movie yeah 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 oh here's one slightly horrific scene in the middle of it you know it's it's stuff like um, Indiana Jones fun action adventure romp oh and here's a sequence where we pull a guy's heart out and burn him alive yeah it. It's that sort of thing. You know, if you've got young kids, they might be a bit scared by some of those scenes, but they're the scenes of the bad guys, so they're kind of meant to be. So, you know, parental judgment call on that one, but I think most kids should be okay going to see this movie, because th this is the epitome of a family movie. You know, this is meant to be enjoyed by the whole family. Um, which, obviously, is, is what you want from, you know, a superhero film. And... <sighs> It works really, really well. It's very, very funny. It's got a lot of heart, which I think was an important element to get right for this character. You can kind of tell that a lot of the cast are just having fun with it. Um, you know, Mark Strong as the villain is just in full bastard mode. And there was an interview with him recently where his comment was, you know, he, he actually really likes playing these kind of you know, full-on evil characters just because they're fun to play. You know, he gets to be a complete bastard and, you know, just, just roll with it. And, yeah, I kind of get that. Playing a villain is fun. I've, you know, I've done it myself from time to time on, you know, on this channel. You know, um, you know when I was narrating, um, you know, villain parts in, in uh, visual novels and things like that. And, yeah, it's fun to just ham it up as, as the full-on, you know, evil prick. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's a very, very good film. It's very enjoyable. The, the action is... Pretty decent. It's you know, it's not ridiculous, and you can tell that this film didn't have a ridiculously large budget. Um, the budget for this film is apparently about eighty million dollars, uh, which you know, to make a a superhero film is actually not that much. But they take what they have and they use it very well. Um, so you know, th there's a couple of moments where the effects are not brilliant, but they work for what for the tone that they're going for. Um, and because the, you know, they clearly didn't have the budget for mega ridiculous over-the-top action scenes, they focus it on a lot more personal aspects, which for this kind of story actually works really well. So again, they took what was theoretically a limitation in terms of the budget and made it work for them. Um, Weird comparison, but it's similar to the way that Deadpool had their budget cut, um, so they their planned you know, giant ridiculous gunfight at the end got toned down, and they turned it into a joke. 
you know, about Deadpool forgetting, you know, all his guns in the car. So, you know, he brought, like, 400 guns and didn't get to use any of them. And again, that was funny in the context of that film. And in the context of this film, they focus it on the personal story rather than anything big and epic and ridiculous, which I'm absolutely fine with. It works for what it's trying to do. Um, so, you know, you compare this to something like, I don't know, Infinity War. It's a much, much smaller scale film, but that's exactly what you would expect. Um, you know, because again, that, I have no goddamn idea what the budget for Infinity War was, but it was huge. Um, you know, and of course, we've got Avengers Endgame coming out fairly soon. Um, so, yeah, that's. Well, that, that's very much what was going on there, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, really good film. Really enjoyed it. Um, I would strongly recommend you take your kids if you've got them. Um, just be aware there's a couple of scary bits that do crop up probably about two or three times throughout. Um, and yeah, but yeah, overall, really good film, really enjoyed it, and I would strongly recommend it. Now we go into the spoilers. So, you know, again, if you haven't seen the film, go watch it. Uh, if you have and you want to stick around to hear my thoughts on the spoiler bits, uh, five, four, three, two, one, and now we're in spoiler territory. I kind of didn't see the end coming, as in the, the big climax. I realised very early on when um, they were talking about, you know, uh, the other thrones need to be filled. I realised that the other foster kids were going to take on the mantles of, you know, the, the other the other Shazams, or whatever they end up being called. Um, but I wasn't actually expecting them to do it in this film. I was expecting that to be left purely as teases for the sequel. But the actual moment when, you know, he, he takes the staff off uh, the bad guy and, you know, slams it down into the ground and basically he says, you know, to all of them, you know, all hands on deck, you know, call out my name. And, you know, the actual moment when you have all six of them, you know, in their full superhero, you know, transformation, you know, the whole shebang, that I liked. That was really good. Because, again, it kept it focused on the heart and the soul, and partly the fact that these guys are all still kids. You know, that they they got a crew of actors to play the, um, you know, the, the superhero versions who I think meshed really well with the younger versions as well. Um, you know, so you've got uh, the, the... I'm not going to be able to remember their names, unfortunately, but because uh, I'm, I'm bad with names at the best times. But, um, you know, you had the the, uh, the gamer kid who, you know, when he's thrown lightning bolts, is uh, yelling Hadouken, you know, which is Street Fighter reference, and the Hadouken is a fireball. I'm going to be picky about this. Um, but, you know, again... That's the kind of nerdy stuff that I could absolutely see a, you know, what, how old was he, like 10, 12? You know, kid doing, you know, if he suddenly acquires superpowers. Um, you know, and uh, the little girl, you know, just sprinting around and still being really affectionate to people, even though she could now, you know, travel at super speed and stuff like that. So, yeah, they did a really good job with, the, you know, or, or um, the, uh, you know, the, the uh, kid who was, you know, trying to be, you know, trying to, you know, lift lots of weight and, and get, you know, and lose a bit of weight and get a bit, you know, bigger and tougher. And suddenly, holy hell, I'm huge! You know, when he sort of runs over to the uh, Ferris wheel to try and stop it falling, he's like, I've got this! I've got this! Oh my god, I have got this! <laughs> that was great. That, you know... So, yeah. And, um, you know, and of course, the, the big one there was um, Billy's best friend, whose name I just... Oh, god. I'm bad with names, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, who, obviously, for... Goodness knows how long he's had that cane. It's it's implied he could well have had the cane pretty much his entire life. Um, you know, and and the moment when he realizes that he can now fly, and that <laughs> again, this film is going to really hit hard with you know the younger generation. Anyone who's in the eight fifteen age bracket is going to identify hard with these characters. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's genuinely really, really important to see. Um, I find it interesting that in this version, Mary was actually the eldest. Um, because in most versions, Mary, I think Mary used to be Billy's twin sister, uh, way back in the day. 
but um, you know, here having her, and again, they did a really good job in terms of casting people who looked like they could be the elder versions of the kids. Um, I'm assuming they started with the kids and then cast based on that, or I I, I don't know enough about the casting process to know how it works when you're trying to do something like that. But yeah, you know, the, to the point where you know the actress playing the elder Mary or the the superhero version of Mary. I was looking at it and going, I can't tell if that's the same actress with you know, some makeup to make her look a bit older or if it's a different actress. Um, and once you know, once we got to the credits, it was definitely a different actress. But, you know, good, good work on the casting there, guys. That that was good. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the thing about this film that really you know, hit home for me was that grand finale. And I'm very glad they kept it out of all the trailers. I kind of wish they'd kept the um, rooftop leap where he you know, runs, where he sprints off the roof, leaps out into the sky, yells Shazam, lightning bolt comes down, he transforms, and he flies off. I kind of wish they'd kept that out of the trailers as well, because um, I'm still doing my best to avoid trailers where possible for you know, anything I know I'm going to see. But that has, you know, that's been gift all over the internet and stuff like that, so I knew that was coming. And again, I think that would have hit a little bit harder if I hadn't seen it. But no, overall, that that was you know that's that entire sequence was really good. My only real complaint about that entire sequence, and this sort of sh goes into the villain as well. I feel like the seven deadly sins should have been more clearly defined. Um, you know, I I fit because a couple of them were relatively obvious. You know, the big pudgy one you know, with with the mouth in its gut was obviously gluttony. Um, and he clearly states which one Envy is, because that's the, the small one that's, you know, the last one that's inside um, Mark Strong. But I feel like the individual Seven Sins should have been a little more clearly defined, because, again, they had really nice character designs. Or creature designs is probably the better way of phrasing that. You know, really, really nice creature designs, but I, I feel like they could have been differentiated a bit more, just in terms of Flat telling us which is which. Um... You know, and maybe made the battle a little more personal by having each one of the kids have to overcome something that's, you know, a little bit more personal to them. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, that the, you know, so the kid I mentioned earlier who, you know, clearly has, you know, a few weight issues and has been trying to buff himself up, you know, maybe he has to defeat gluttony, you know, in some sort of symbolic way. I, I feel like that might be a bit harsh, but you, you know what I mean? Um, um, or... Yeah, um, I'm trying to think, think which other way around to do it. Yeah, maybe um, you know that the gamer kid has to defeat pride because he was a little arrogant earlier in the film. Um, again, I, I feel like there's a little bit more you could have done with it. Um, but again, what's there isn't bad in any way. I would have just liked a little bit more focus there. So you know, you know, just just to give them a little personal moment with it each. Um, but no, it, it was good. Um, admittedly, I don't know how you'd factor lust into that without you know getting probably slightly more dodgy than they wanted to for a kids' movie. I'm assuming lust was tentacles, by the way. Well, again, would have been nice to have this clarified, but uh, yeah, I'm assuming. But uh, while we're on that topic, um, as I said, Mark Strong is is you know, in grade A villain mode because again, he gives good villain. You know, he he plays quite a lot of villains and he does a really good job because. Well, yeah, he's a British actor. Um, but you really get the sense of Envy and... You know, again, there's a reason why Envy is the one that stays with him uh, when the rest come out to go and fight uh, the heroes. And that's a... You, know, it, you really get that sense of how bitter he is about not... about you know, failing the test and, you know, fail, you know, and, and failing to earn the power way back at the beginning and um you know he clearly had a pretty rubbish childhood um you know John Glover once again DC's A grade dickbag dad because uh, if you're not aware he was uh, Lionel Luther in Smallville for many many years um you know playing the father of Lex Luthor and it, you know it's one of those performances where like oh so that's why Lex is such a douchebag gotcha um <laughs> But yeah, so 
he's you know he's good in this he's not in it a massive amount but you know he's he's you know you get why you know that the character has such a problem has has so many psychological problems and again there's a there is something of a message here in that you know john glover is blatantly you know, the, the kind of father who was like man up you know be a man and, and all that bullshit parenting advice that doesn't actually help any kid and mostly screws them up. Because um, here's the thing, if you've ever told to, you know, be a man, that usually means bottle up, bottle up your emotions. You know, be, you know, you're not, you're only allowed to have seething anger as an emotion. To which my response is, well, one, that's not psychologically healthy. Two, that's really bad for everybody around you. And three, piss off, you asshole. You know, here's the thing. I am a, I am a very emotional human being. You know, I cry at all sorts of weird stuff. You know, she put me down in front of the wrong Disney movie? Yeah, I'm going to cry a bloody river. And you know what? Who cares? That, quite frankly, is psychologically healthy. There is a reason why we had these emotions built in. Oh, boy. Right, I'm going to move away from talking about bad parenting, because otherwise I'm going to go off on a completely different route. But yeah, again, John Glover is great in this movie. Um, right down to, you know, him, him absolutely pissing himself when... Uh, you know, when when the you know, when his son walks into the you know the big boardroom meeting and just unleashes the seven deadly sins and they're just murderizing everybody. Um that of course is is the bit where I was like, holy crap, this film's taking a turn for the dark. Because I mean the, there's a bit where a guy gets his head bitten off, and yet it's like mostly off screen. Insofar as you know the guy gets lifted up, the giant jaw comes down around his head, and then it just you know and then you just see his feet twitching as his head gets bitten off, and it's like <laughs> Uh, it's just all, you know, all the hairs on my body just receding. Just, oh god, no. Um, you know, and, uh, just, it's a really grim sequence. Um, you know, right down to the bit where uh, he actually just, you know, picks up his elder brother and chucks him out the window. That was dark. That, you know, that was really dark. Uh, so yeah, the, as I said, I feel like... There... They are very, very dark tonal moments, and I, I get what they were going for in a you know, bad guy, you know, bad guy, bad heroes, lighthearted and fun. They might have overplayed it a tiny smidge, um, but you know, but no, it, again, he was really, really, good. you know, Mark Strong was really, really good as the villain. He he did exactly what he needed to do. Um, uh, Jamin Honsu as the wizard Shazam. I feel like he didn't really do much in that regard. You know, it, I would have liked to understand him a little bit better, but at the same time, I understand why he ha kind of had to get out of the movie as quickly as he did. Um, because if he hung around as an actual mentor for Billy, then we wouldn't have Billy learning to be a hero with the aid of his family rather than you know, the Grand Wizard. And I think that was the right move. Um, and they clearly dropped some hints for future films because you know, uh, Shazam makes specific reference to them you know, creating a former champion who you know, basically went mad with power and betrayed them. And that's clearly Black Adam. Um, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is actually listed as one of the producers on this film, or might even have been an executive producer. Yeah, you know, and he signed on to play Black Adam donkeys years ago now. Uh, so presumably he'll be in uh, the next film. And again, that's the obvious next place to take this is, you know, again, the message of this film is basically fa you know, the power of family and unity overcomes the power of the individual. You know, it's a case of, I am the greatest one of all. Or oh, because I stand alone and none can stand against me. You know, Oh, I will defeat you all on my own. To which the response is, nah, mate. I got siblings. And, yeah, again, it's a basic message, but it's one that absolutely works. You know, strength comes through unity. Um, you know, I firmly believe that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good, solid message. That's, it's not exactly subtle about it, but it doesn't beat you about the head with it. You know, kids are going to walk away absolutely getting the message without feeling like it was, you know, you know, tipped down their throats, you know, in a giant gallon jug. I'm going with weird metaphors today. I think I'm just, I think I'm still tired. Um, but no. Um, and, and, you know, Shazam himself, and so that's, that's clearly where they're going 
to, to bring Black Adam into it. And to be fair, I'm kind of looking forward to that. You know? Because again, uh, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson doesn't play a lot of bad guys. Um, last time I can remember him doing it was Doom. Oh boy, that's not a good precedent, is it? Um, but no, a, a, a genuinely charismatic Black Adam could be a really interesting thing to see. And again, dude has charisma in spades, so I am curious to see where they go with it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up doing a, you know, come to my, you know, come to the dark side and, uh, you know, join me on the path of evil, blah, blah, blah. But my big question is who's throne number seven? Because that was the thing I was thinking throughout most of the film was, okay, so the, you know, Billy and the the other five foster kids are obviously going to be, you know, are all going to hold the mantle. You know, and, and stand together. And as I said, I assumed they were saving that for the sequel rather than doing it here. Um, but that still leaves one chair. Because again, seven is a you know, is an important magical number. This this turns up in a lot of folklore and a lot of you know stuff. Um, you know, J.K. Rowling used it in uh, Harry Potter. Um, you know, the old seventh son of a seventh son will be a witch or a wizard. Um, um, you know, so on and so forth. You know, again, in this film, you've got you know, the seven symbols that you have to you know, write seven times and the seven deadly sins. So, yeah, seven is a very important number. And at the moment, there's six of them. You know, and there were seven thrones on the Rock of Ages. So, who is number seven, I wonder? I'm, I'm curious to see where they go with this. But, uh, yeah, so, really, really good film. Um, what haven't I talked about? Oh, yeah. The actual dynamic between uh, Billy and um, his brother um, is actually really good. You know that both um, the young actor and Zachary Levi have really good chemistry with the actor playing um, you know the, the his brother. Again, I need to remember the damn character names. You know they they both have really good chemistry, and you feel really kind of sad when they. You know, when when they had their breakup in Act Two, breakup, you, you know what I mean. You know, when they had their falling out in Act Two, um, and yeah, they act pretty much how you would expect kids who've suddenly come into superpowers to act. You know, he, you know, he, he kind of abuses them a bit. You know, he takes a bunch of selfies, gets a bunch of cash, you know, steals stuff from a cash machine. Um, you know, uses it to buy beer. I'll freely bet. I found the beer scene quite amusing, where they're just like, I would like to buy some of your finest beer, please. And the cashier's just like... Thank you. You know, and again, that's... Yeah. You know, we, we've all been underage drinkers. You know, just seeing what we can get away with. You know, you know I mean, granted, I was, you know, 17 and 6 foot 3 before I attempted it, but, you know. Um... Yeah, you know, and that, that was just... I can't remember what night out that was. Yeah. I mean, I was not far off legal drinking age, and I'd already been drinking in the house, you know, in the home, you know, years before that. Because, again, you know, alcohol laws in this country are much smarter than your American alcohol laws. Because in uh, this country, as long as it's with parental consent, you can drink from, you know, a fairly young age. Which means that when I hit 18, when I suddenly was legal to go out and buy alcohol, I didn't really care... You know, it, was, it, it wasn't some, you know, mystical thing that I'd been waiting my whole life for. It was, you know, the thing I had on a, you know, of a Saturday night, just, you know, out of enjoyment. So, you know, you know I, again, I've only really drunk to excess. I've, I've only ever been blackout drunk once in my life, and that was homemade cocktails that I probably, you know, that I, that I overdid it with. Um, you know, that was second year of university, I think. So yeah, that's the only time I've been so drunk I can't remember what happened the next day. And to me, that's, you know, what is the point of having a night out and getting so drunk you can't remember the night out? <laughs> you know, that's just not, you know, it might be fun at the time, but if you can't remember it, what's the point? But anyway, um, but no, I, I like the fact that, you know, their reaction to, to beer is just... <laughs> they just spit it out immediately because, yeah, beer tastes horrible. I'm, I'm not going to, you know... Beer is something you have to get used to the taste of, and you know the fact that they basically just take the beer back and come out with a whole bunch of sweets and stuff. Yeah, they're kids. You know that that again. Zachary Levi is actually really good at playing the sort of childlike innocence 
effectively, um, and that works really well for this film. Um, and the twist with Billy's mother, where he does eventually find her, and the reason that, you know, you know he and you know and the fact that she is just not a good mother. You know he he's banked his entire plan for his life on finding his mother. And you know when it turns out the reason that you know they were separated was because she saw him you know with the police after they you know got accidentally separated, and th and genuinely believed that he would be better off without her. Yeah, it's 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 really kind of a you know, heartbreaking emotional scene, um, you know, and and that's kind of the moment when he realizes that you know he can't rely on a dream, and he has to you know look at the family that's actually there and that wants him, and you know that is a really really good you know, bit of the film. You know, again, the the young actor was was selling the bejesus out of that scene. So yeah, it's a really, really good film. Um, again, you can tell it was straining against its budget on a few occasions, but nothing too major. And as I say, this film is going to absolutely hit home with younger audiences. Again, I can see this doing to a lot of kids what you know, uh, Superman, uh, the Christopher Reeve Superman, did to me as a kid. Um, yeah, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of kids running around playgrounds, you know, in the next you know, couple of months yelling Shazam. You know, or even just you know, kind of whispering it to themselves and hoping. You know, in the same way that you know, my generation, I, I was forever you know, you forever hear stories of people of my generation basically, you know, sitting up and really hoping their Hogwarts later was gonna arrive and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, and yeah, I can absolutely see a lot of you know I want this film to do well. It's doing pretty good numbers so far. Um, you know, word, the word of mouth on it is really good, and yeah, I I just hope they do. You know, I I want to see more. Um, and yeah, so yeah, really good film overall. I really enjoyed it. Um, more of this, please, DC. Um, both, you know, just in general, overall tone going forward, and in terms of just. More Shazam specifically. You know, he he was, it it was great in this movie. I really enjoyed seeing all six of them. You know, standing together. That that was a great moment. Um, you know, it, it really brought the you know, your family brings you strength motif through really really powerfully, and yeah, overall it was a really good movie. Um, yeah, that that's pretty much all I've got. Um, have I missed anything important? No, no, I think that's that's uh, that's the main thrust of my thoughts. So um, uh, tomorrow I'm going to do the next in my um, hypothetical DC movies series. Uh, it took me a while to decide, but I think I'm going to talk about uh, Hawkman and Hawkgirl, um, which I think could be interesting. Uh, I have received a request to talk about Booster Gold, so I'll do that one after the next one. And uh, yeah. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in future videos.